Alright guys, what's going on and welcome back. It is Elio. Hope you guys are all doing well. This isn't the Zappers tier list, but I promise to you guys that the Zappers tier list will be after this one. This one was actually requested quite a while ago. I want to say literally four or five months ago by one of you guys. Uh, I forgot what I've done with the comment because I kind of like snip comments and save them. That way I can do stuff like this even though sometimes it takes me forever to do it but anyways in today's tier list we're gonna be taking a look at the top PvP skills that you should be using like if you're running leads these are the skills you should be using and hopefully this can address uh, the one comment I received about like players like using bad leads or bad leads still gonna happen even though they have better leads on their PvP team and they you know lose and you can see that they've lost to your defense team Possibly because of just poor picking uh, of their leader skill? Absolutely. But let's go ahead and get right into it. Alright, so as I stated before, this is just a PvP kind of tier list of leader skills. Now, and uh, relatively speaking, does this super duper matter? Yes. And no, I mean, do you have to have? Do you even have to have a leader skill to be uh, one of the top dogs in PvP? I don't think so. I'm not a PvP expert, but I don't think so. It's really more about how your mons are gemmed up. But using these leader skills gives you a slight advantage over another player, and it's very, very important. Even if you're not doing it like to get the gems, you probably should be doing it to get the gems. And this can also tie into the defensive part of PvP as well, making sure that your lead is as strong as possible that way it can just make other people cuss when they attack your defense team but right before i begin talking about this quick disclaimer these tier lists they are all pure opinion they are all purely opinion you could think that recovery lead is s tier i'm not going to argue with it over it i'm not going to argue with you over it it doesn't really matter at the end of the day because this is a video game but any tier list that you see on the channel is completely opinionated 100% biased. There's nothing behind this other than what I've come up with and what the other boys on the MSO Discord, which if you haven't checked already, go ahead and check it out because we're up there all the time. We have a lot of fun. We talk about MSL and other things, and it's nice to know you guys behind the comments. But let's go ahead and just talk about this list. So at the bottom of the list, we have the I tier. Now the I tier is not part of the tier list. The I tier is just like the it exists or it's just impractical part of the list obviously it's not part of it but i don't i don't think there's a recovery um a recovery or a soul boon uh it's debuff lead in the game i'm 99 sure there isn't i couldn't find any astromon as i was doing this tier list where they used it but it's just impractical and is listed as impractical because they do exist but in terms of what tier they would be on they would be d tier but i just wanted to cover all bases with this using what leader skills that we have to work with for right now coming in at d tier and as always the um pretty much the top tier of this tier is going to be on the left and the lower part of the tier is going to be on the right but coming in on the, the d part of the list um soul boon red is top tier i guess you could say of this list but don't get this confused like all of these skills are listed and it's pretty much solid across the board uh at least of what has been agreed on of what they do so even though soul boon red is in front of soul boon blue and also in front of the recovery up well you know the recovery increase um later skill all three of these are just trash. They are all equally garbage. They're all equally a waste of your time. So if you're using these leads pretty much anywhere, at least in my opinion, what a waste. What a awful waste. This, don't use this. If you have no other leads that you can use in PvP, especially for newer players just starting out, I'm not going to bust your chops over that, dude. You have to use what you have. I definitely understand where you're coming from with the casually account where... I just don't have a good lead, so I choose to have a lead versus no lead. But if you have other options up on this tier list, please choose those first. Moving on to the C part of the list, though, we have uh, the critical rate leader skill and then also the resistance uh, leader skill. Now, you may be wondering, why is critical rate and um, the resist leader skill C tier? The issue with uh, a crit lead and also the resist lead is you can obtain these 
through subs alone. Like, if you throw a crit rate gem and you have a mon on intuition set, why do you need to run a crit rate lead? I know crit resist exists, I know that crisis aversion exists, but we're not there yet. Relax. Relax. Why would you run a crit rate lead if all of your mons can get maximum crit without having crit rate lead? That's exactly why it's C tier. It's it's that simple. The same thing with resist. Why would you run a resist lead uh, when all of your mons already have max resist? It's basically a, a waste of a later skill because it doesn't add anything over the maximum threshold. I know that crit rate does have a higher threshold nowadays, but still, is it useful? Especially with crit resist going on in PvP? In my opinion, no. Am I hating on anyone that decides to use a crit rate lead on their PvP team because they haven't hit max crit? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. You use what you have at the time. So if you are doing that, but you have better leads and you're able to tweak those mods to where they aren't reliant on a lead, then definitely go for it. But do keep in mind, this is purely for PvP. Purely for PvP. Uh, moving on though to the B tier, uh, this one is just raising your uh, defense and your attack. These are both the leader skills for like the defensive one and then also the attack one. So these raise your base stats, I'm assuming. Well, not, not assuming, but if I believe so, they raise your base stats up. Now, is this super duper good? It really depends on what mons that you're using. Like, it's totally situational. But are these better than the crit rate and resist lead? Obviously so, because you get to raise up the defense of all your mons on your team, which could help you out a lot more than a crit rate or resist lead because you already have those stats max. While there's not a definitive cap on a defense or attack in terms of damage, it does give you a little bit boost, which could help you kind of like take the enemy over if you're kind of struggling with that. But is it the end of the world if you don't have this lead? No, but it, it at least... To my understanding, it has at least some more importance than the C part of the tier list. Uh, moving on, though, we have the A part, and that's Death Blow and the HP lead. Now, this is where things get spicy because Death Blow is pretty poggers. Uh, crit rate lead is not pretty poggers. Why is that? That's just the simple fact that Death Blow helps increase your uh, critical hit damage. So if a Mon crits, it's going to help boost that damage up. I'm not sure if it's super duper significant. It's really dependent on the Mon of... Well, it's really dependent on what uh, rank that Mon is. Like if it's a Nat 4 or a Nat 5, etc. Of how potent your leader skills are. So obviously the stronger of the mons in terms of just their overall ranking is going to be just a stronger lead to have and crit damage is very very much relied on not super duper relied on but it can be very much relied on especially if you're running a nuker type setup where damage is key to making sure that you can win in pvp to the right of that though we have the hp lead which surprising but not surprising can once again help you try and not like balance your team but if you are running if you're running a team that's super duper tanky obviously a death blow lead doesn't really benefit you at all because they probably don't have anywhere near max uh, crit rate not to mention that if they're super duper tanky why would you have them with crit rate anyways when their job is probably just to cc so it's like more of an offensive type of lead versus a defensive type of lead. It's up to you to choose and figure out how you want these leads to work, but it's pretty simple. Like, that's literally it. You want the HP lead. If you have CCers and you want to keep those mons alive as long as possible, you want the death, bo death blow lead. If you're running, you can, you know, you could run like light Yukis and stuff of that nature. Mons that have shock that you use as CC and damage, they're perfectly fine with either lead. As long as people survive and you can get the most use out of that Mon for your current composition, that's it. That's why this is A tier. And then last but not least is the S tier. Now these are the Poggers um, leader skills right here. They are all debuffers. Well, the, these are all debuffing leader skills, which is always great to have. I'm trying to move my hands, but not like hit my freaking desk because I just keep doing that in like every single video. So rest in peace, uh, headphone users. But over here we have disconcernment, which disconcernment obviously lowers your t lowers the player's team. Well, the opposite player's teams resist. This is very very dire especially for my type of setup in, setup in PvP, which is what I call the tryhard team, which consists of Dark Merlin, uh, two Light Yukis, and then Light Griffin. Now this 
lead for me, especially for my Dark Merlin, is absolutely poggers, as I stated before. Just for the simple fact that, number one, hopefully with their resistance already being lowered, even though I know it's already capped out, hopefully one of the Yukis can get one of their shocks to stick, which is already going to take Wanmon out of the equation. That's also going to help the other Yuki hopefully get her shock to, to stick, but it may not happen. And then with Light Griffin, Light Griffin does have resistance down, but when you take Disconcernment and resistance down together, it's it, it's almost free, dude. It's literally almost free. Now, I do PvP on auto because I am nothing more than a casual, but it's it's pretty surprising how much you can melt mons or prevent mons from basically working at all just because they can't attack. This is the same exact thing I do in Tower of Chaos, same exact, same exact thing for Dark Gilgamesh. He can't kill you if he can't get a turn. That's the name of the game. To the right of that though is Crisis Aversion, which then ro uh, lowers your uh, crit rate. Now, we have the crit rate lead down here at the bottom of the C part of the tier list and then we have crisis version at the top that's because this overall lowers whatever team that you're fighting your opponent's um ability to get off crits on your team this is very important because lowering the crits especially if you're fighting a nuker type composition is going to cause a lot less damage to your team which increases survivability and hopefully can lead you to a wonderful if not dirty uh victory so that's very very helpful especially if you know, if someone tries to attack your defense, obviously they can change it up and run a different leader skill, but it's just something there that's very, very useful. And Water Wild Thing is like the master of this lead since they, ever, since they changed her um, leader skill quite a while ago. And then moving on to the last two, we have the charging stance and also the defensive stance. Once again, these are all debuffing moves, so this is going to lower your opponent's um, overall attack. And this is also going to lower their overall defense. You know, the broken sword, lower attack, the broken shield, lower defense. Once again, very, very helpful because I feel like these, at least the debuffs, seem to lower things a lot more than what the other leader skills that are in the blue raise, at least from what I can understand. But I mainly see these type of leader skills all in the S tier, mainly on that 4s or that 5s. So that could, that could explain the kind of, you know, the thought process behind that of where these seem more potent just because they're on harder to get variant mons. But all of these uh, skills in the S tier, they're interchangeable. They all are super duper useful. I personally get the most use out of Disconcernment, but I do have a team built around Disconcernment, so it kind of works out in that favor. And if you have a different team, obviously switching up with a leader skill would mean a lot more to you than it would for me because my team isn't built that way and that's not to say that you can't ever change your leader skill ever in pvp but because you could do it every match but if i had the ability or if i had the mons with the lead and they were actually useful useful for pvp i would definitely be marinating around the a or s part of the tier list now do keep in mind as i stated before earlier in the video these are all pretty much on par with each other i'm not saying that this concernment is better than crisis aversion i'm not saying that you know a crit rate lead is better than resist in terms of pvp these are all 100 percent equal all 100 percent equal i know i read from left to right uh in terms of what is better but in this specific tier list these are all 100 percent equal once again this is all opinionated you can say elio you're completely wrong about this you don't do pvp and you know what i have to say about that That's it. That's it. But I definitely hope you guys enjoyed this tier list. I'm sorry, my dude, that it took me forever to get this out and actually record it and upload it. But it was something that I've been working on in the background. And hopefully this will help some of you guys, like at least, at least five of you guys out there, to get a little bit better understanding of what type of team compositions that you're running in PvP and prevent you from running into the... Um, the super duper funny thing to see on people's defense teams where you're running a resist lead but you can run a death blow a death blow lead instead and it's like why dude why would you run a resist lead like it does nothing for you when you're running full nukers you have a team of freaking light leo you have a light yuki you have a light zephyros and a dark sandwraith why are you running a resistance lead if you could run Death Blow and that would affect your Light Leo and your Light Yuki. 
you know? It's stuff like that that I'm hoping that this video helps. Will it curb everything? Absolutely not. But if at least five people learn from this and kind of work yourself up through this tier list and uh, learn to just get a better use out of your minds and understanding what your strengths and weaknesses are, you can hopefully climb the ranks in PvP and make it a little bit more competitive. But at the end of the day, this is all just advice, you guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.